Thank you, Chairperson, sir, for your kind introduction. And at the onset, I want to thank uh, Bongshi Shabu, sir, for giving me this opportunity to share my views on this important topic, that is gut microbiota. Uh, let's begin with respecting this legend, who is the father of microbiology, the Leeuwen Hook. He had first time discovered the microscope and he had given us the first time the picture of gut microbiota. Rather, this was published in uh, that time good uh, reputed medical journal, the plaque isolated from his own teeth moving and that was, they give the name like little animal coolers. So let's respect him. And now we know that we have these facilities. Uh, we have scanning electron microscope. We can see on top of some mucus, uh, the, micro the microbiome is sitting. We need to understand that in us, uh, when we are talking about us, it is multiple. Actually, it is not I, it is we. And uh, there is more bacterial cells than human cells. Initially, it was thought like that, 10 is to 1, but now the counting little bit changed, but they are actually predominating. And most importantly, we had almost 1,000 of bacterial species. Mostly they are, for the 99% of them confined in 40, uh, 40 uh, bacterial species. But the important things to note is that they have 2,000 genes per species. So all over, almost 2 lakh uh, genes. So that is almost 100 times the figure that is approximate to around, to, which we know we, we have around 20,000 human genes. And weight is 1.5 kg. So that means this is a similar weight of a liver. So we can say this is also a new organ we need to give emphasis. Mostly they are pharmacutes, almost 60 to 80 percent. We have bacteroidetes, that is 20 to 30 percent. And there are other group of bacteria too. We know our art follow the rule of uh, unity in diversity. Similarly, in our gut, if we start from our stomach, where in the desert, the palm trees like this, the H. pylori is there. Then you, we can see here this grassland. Sorry. So this grassland, which is like the upper part of the duodenum, we have almost 10 to the power. 2 to 10 to the power 3 of microbes. Then we have a beautiful uh, pine forest that is in the ileum. We have almost 10 to the power 8 microorganism. And then finally, when we reach in the colon, that means we have uh, a rainforest-like microbiota. Uh, so what is important when we have some derangement, when we lose our good friends, when there will be dysbiosis, that is linked to systemic inflammatory failure. And that one of the very major contributing factor is diet. Here, D, that means dysbiosis D, represents diets D. And that IET in the diet, we can say inflammatory endotoxemia. That is also linked with this type of gut microbial derangements. And when we have dysbiotic alteration, we'll have all those gamut of changes inside us. It will evoke autoimmunity, leading to type 1 diabetes. It will also cause derangement in the metabolic parameters, leading to type 2 and even gestational diabetes. Starting from type 1 diabetes, when we, by the virtue of this gut microbiota dysbiosis, we'll have a dysregulation in our immune system. So ultimately, what happened? the handshake between antigen-presenting cell and those t naive cell, that handshake results will cause some disasters. And that will cause some atrocious outcome in terms of lots of cytokine that cause type 1 diabetes. So apart from that, if we have dysbiosis in the gut, that will lead to leak gut syndrome, again, that disposed to type 1 diabetes. And this is a very interesting paper published in Nature Communication, which had clearly shown the gut micro, microflora of the type 1 diabetes was a causative factor in the regulation of glucose metabolism 
and that also had shown how the type 1 diabetes patient showing reduction in their butyrate producing bacteria and overall the lipopolysaccharide in the, their system that becomes ri risen that causes endotoxemia and ultimately they will have islet cell disruption. And they also translated those uh, microbiome in the rat model and had induced similar type of pictures in the rat like we got from the streptojocin induced type 1 diabetes model, even the antibiotic treated mice model. So this paper clearly had shown how the gut microbiota is important for development of type 1 diabetes. And there was another study with Mediterranean diet that had shown how introducing Mediterranean diet improved the quality of gut microbiota and that increased the short chain fatty acid level and decreased the trimethyl amine in oxide and that for, therefore that will lead to some ameliorating effect that cause some reduction in the inflammation and the type 1 diabetes related cardiovascular disease event become lessened. There was another study in type 1 diabetes rat model that had shown this probiotic lactobacillus johnsoni had shown uh, inhibition or delay in the onset of type 1 diabetes. We know this very important paper, this metagenome wide association study that had shown if I am type 2 diabetic, then we, we have a moderate degree of uh, gut microbial dysbiosis. There will be decrease in the abundance of butyrate producing bacteria and also there will be increase in the opportunistic pathogens. And the trilog between genetic, diet and environment which influence microbiota and that ultimately lead to different types of metabolic disease like obesity, like uh, type 2 diabetes. And if we want to understand this complex picture of gut microbiota and inflammatory interface, then we need to understand if we have more dietary fiber, we'll have more production of short chain fatty acids. And those short chain fatty acids, mostly the butyrate, they will regulate us in a proper way anti-inflammatory way and they will also increase the mucin production so there will be a protection in the epithelium. But what happens if we lose our good friend, if there is loose in the balance between those short chain fatty acid developing bacteria, so ultimately we lose the system, we will have more branch uh, chain amino acids inside us, our bile uh, that is not being metabolized properly and we will have lots of cytokines like TNF alpha, interleukins and gamma. So this is important to understand the complex association between gut microbiota and type 2 diabetes and how the diet, lifestyle, anxiety, stress, all those influence and make our gut microbiota from symbiont to pathobiont and how if we lose healthy gut microbiota, so ultimately we will have more uh, leaky gut, we will have endotoxemia, more cytokines who are pro-inflammatory and therefore that will lead to adiposity, insulin resistance, more caloric intake, so vicious cycle will be there. So they also regulate our brain. So ultimately we will have a metabolic disease tsunami. So again when we talk about complications associated with type 2 diabetes, one of the major uh, complications is cardiovascular disease uh, like atherosclerosis. We can see how disruption in the gut microbial composition can lead to this uh, horizon of cardiometabolic disease. For an example, if we have more lipopolysaccharide level inside our system that will lead to those endotoxemia, uh, uh, un unnecessary upregulation of those toll-like receptors and 
lead to endothelial cell damage, foam cell formation, vascular inflammation, insulin resistance, all leading to atherosclerosis. And if we do not have appropriate short chain fatty acid, like if, if there is not proper balance between butyrate, acetate, and propionate, that also lead to exaggerated sympathetic activity. So very balance between parasympathetic and sympathetic nervous system we lose. Apart from that, there will be more renal toxins leading to renal toxicities. So we need to acknowledge the importance of our good gut uh, microbiomes our f who are our friend. Let's discuss a few drugs which has some ameliorating effect on this environment. And one of the drug is metformin, which there are multiple studies which had shown they increase the level of Ackermansia, which is a mucus degrading gram negative bacteria. Actually, they are restoring those reduced regulatory T reg cell. So, the exaggerated pro inflammatory cytokines will be decreased and we will have less insulin resistance. And there are multiple studies which had shown this beneficial effect of metformin. This is again an important, there are certain species which being elevated post metformin therapy, they are responsible for hydrogen sulfide production, which actually protective for us, anti-inflammatory for our gut. And when we talk multiple mechanism in the level of microorganism, there we can find if we have a proper bile acid pool, that reaction between fursinoid X receptor and TGR5 signaling that becomes restored and they are not become steatosis and we can prevent MFLD. Apart from that, they had multiple effects on the level of L cells, K cells, goblet cells, so protect the uh, cut mucosa along with increasing the level of increasing hormones. Another molecule we all know that acarbose which facilitates the production of short chain fatty acids. And we know they are a little bit different than other alpha glucosidase inhibitors. Uh, their pharmacological properties, they are bigger molecule than uh, voglibose or miglitol. And that can be, uh, that is one of the major reasons why they are giving those benefits the other alpha glucosidase inhibitors are not providing as per the data. And this was again another study which had shown how acarbose exhibited better gut e uh, ecosystem than vildagliptin. We had also conducted a recent study. Uh, exercise. There are systematic review meta-analysis which had shown with a prescribed exercise mentioned here, the environment in the gut become improved and that can be uh, responsible for uh, good metabolic health. And that dose of the exercise, if we increase, here we can see if it is properly maintained, the vagus nerve can be stimulated in a favorable way. But in, the, in case of strenuous exercise, that is again responsible for hypercortisolemia, more lipopolysaccharide levels, more inflammatory cytokines, so we'll have gut dysbiosis. I will just run uh, so that my gut microbiome may become a little bit improved. Uh, so please forgive me. The, there are certain uh, data which had shown the vegan diet is beneficial. And if we have those vegan diet, the butyrate level will be more. We had also published this in JAPI very recently. One paper was there where they had shown ketogenic diet decreased those TH17 mediated uh, inflammation and that could be better. Probiotic, there are certain systematic review meta-analysis shown to be beneficial, but not in quantum of HB1C reduction, fasting PP reduction. Symbiotics, that means combination of pro and pre, that had also shown to be beneficial in animal model. Postbiotics, they are having some data. The fecal microbiota transplantation is upcoming now. And when we talk about this very interesting study, which had shown FMT could be a safe, effective, affordable bacterial-based therapy for type 2 diabetes management. So our gut is not full of only bacteria. 
will have some good viruses also and we have some bacteriophages also. And there are good uh, bacteriophages like Klebsiella phage which could be helpful for us. Again, this is a, a, a hypothesis published in uh, cell reports in 2024, very recently. But this study done in mouse model had shown phase those bacteriophages versus antibiotics in treating diabetic wounds, and phage, uh, bacteriophage arm had shown better results compared to antibiotics. So in nutshell, to summarize, these are the options we have, starting from exercise, then uh, fecal microbiota transplantation, then some food. We had mentioned about the plant-based diet, drugs like metformin and acarbose, which had shown some beneficial uh, effect in our gut microbial ecosystem. So to end, uh, this was an editorial published by us. We had ask this question uh, to the doctors. So what is your option? Reach with rupees or reach in good gut microbiota? What is more important for our metabolic health? Thank you. Thank you very much.